Okay guys, thanks for staying around for my cyclic acetal uh, mechanism walkthrough video. Hopefully you guys will like the way I explain this mechanism and then you guys will be able to memorize it and understand why everything happens much better. So if you didn't take a look at my acetal video mechanism walkthrough, you might want to take a look at it first because I'll be referring a lot of things back to it. And um, yeah, it's very similar. This mechanism is very similar to the acetal one, but the only difference is that you have a dial molecule that you're working with. Alright? So you want to follow me along once again, try and be one step ahead of me, and guess like every guess the next step before I do it so you guys can realize what you guys did wrong or what's correct about my step. Alright, so once again, uh, you're going to create a cyclic acetal that's a really good protecting group because it protects your carbonyl from Grignard's that can substitute here or other alcohols that can substitute here because your double ether kind of cyclic molecule is not very reactive. Okay, yeah. So, what's your first step, right? Well, since it's an acid-catalyzed uh, reaction, I, I, by the way, I'm just going to do the acid-catalyzed mechanism right now. If you guys want the base mechanism, um, post a comment, but I don't have any time like, right now to do it. So, yeah, we're going to do the acid mechanism. So, since our reaction is acid-catalyzed, we're going to probably use our acid first, right? And like in the acetal mechanism video, I already explained that it's going to be this oxygen right here with his lone pairs and not the alcohols. Because it's kind of like, it's always the strongest base and the strongest acid reacts, if you remember back to Gen Chem. And the strongest acid is HCl, and the strongest base in our case is the carbonyl. So you want to use your acid first to kind of destabilize your molecule and kind of activate it for a reaction. Okay. Oh yeah, I just realized, um, by destabilizing your molecule, you're kind of increasing the energy. So if you ever learn or seen exothermic graphs where the reaction is kind of like this. Well, and this is like the reaction energy. Well, this is kind of like, this step here is basically what we're doing. We're pronating our carbonyl to destabilize it and bring it to a higher energy level. So it's going kind of more reactive. And then it'll just fall downhill, fall down the hill really easily. But, uh, yeah, anyway. So you pronate it, it's unstable now. You guys, if you watch my acetal video, you know that there's a resonance form. There's a resonance going on with this carbonyl molecule because this double bond can resonate up. By the way, I made a mistake. You have a positive charge here because oxygen's happy when it has two bonds, but right now he's forming a third bond with hydrogen. Also, the electrons are being thrown away or shared with the hydrogen here. So now he's a, he has a positive charge. And that's why you want to resonate your bond up, but I'm just going to show you the resonated form. It's going to be this, nope, no positive charge there. It's going to be this, right? But then you have a positive charge here because this carbon lost the electrons in the bond that migrated up. Now you have a carbocation, which is bad. You don't want that. It'll cause your molecule to be very reactive and explosive and like blow up in your face. You don't want that. You want to protect your pretty face. So um, this step doesn't just happen first. What happens is your dial molecule takes, sees this, and he's take, he takes advantage of it. So your dial molecules, one of them, the electron pair, either attacks, it attacks the um, electrophilic carbon right here and here. And uh, it doesn't really matter because it's in resonance, so this molecule is secretly this molecule, this molecule is secretly this molecule. They're swapping back and forth really, really, really fast. But uh, once it attacks this carbon, it's motivating the bonds in the, in the uh, carbonyl, double bonds, it's motivating the bonds to move up. Because carbon only wants four bonds, right? He has that right now. He's getting a fifth bond from the oxygen. So he's kind of like, okay, which bond can I throw away? And it's this bond right here. Because it perfectly stabilizes the oxygen up here. Yeah. So then your next product is going to be, let's see. La 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 la. La 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 la. La 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 la. This is going to be that. Your molecule tapped in. I'm just going to move it over here. So we can see it better. Your dials over here. Is there anything correct in this uh, mechanism? Double check it. Hit pause. Well, what's wrong is that I forgot a positive charge right here, right? Because your oxygen was neutral before. You had two bonds, and now he's making a third bond. Three bonds makes oxygen positive. You guys are sick of me saying that because I said that a thousand times in my acetal video. But um, I just want to really, really stress it. So yeah, positive charge, and then. Uh, also, the electrons are being donated away, so yeah. Uh, how are we going to fix this, right? Well, 
think back to my acetal video, how do we fix that, how, how do we go forward in our reaction? And the answer is the catalyst that comes back. If you think back to my original video, a catalyst, remember I said the catalyst is never used up or made more of? If that makes sense? <laughs> like, you never make more of your, S, like your catalyst at the end, or you never lose any of your catalyst. And well, we use our catalyst here, so let's just make a sad face. And then we're going to get our catalyst back. Because you ended up creating a Cl- molecule. So I'm going to just put him over here. And then he can help us move the, long, move the reaction along. Because he grabs onto the hydrogen. Hydrogen oxygen bonds the electron. I mean, the, the electrons in the hydrogen oxygen bond goes to the oxygen. That makes it neutral. And then, let's see, and by the way, you get your catalyst back in this step here, so I'm just going to make a smiley face, so we can kind of keep track of our catalyst. Okay. Okay. You should get uh, this molecule now, right? Oh, oh, it's like this. Right? This should be what you got, because we lost the hydrogen. So now it's like that, no more charge because the electrons went to the oxygen, satisfying it. Now it's like this, all right? But we're not exactly at our cyclic acetal yet, right? So but how do we get there? Well, if you look at the uh, reaction, right, it's this second oxygen that is going to be, uh, sorry, <laughs> it's going to be these two oxygens that's in the final product. So we have to figure out a way to kick out this oxygen. So it became an alcohol already. So how are we going to kick it out, right? Because until we kick it out, this oxygen can't attack this carbon, because carbon only wants four bonds. If he gets a fifth bond, he has to kick somebody out, and nobody really wants to leave right now. So what we can do is, we can make this alcohol a better leaving group. And how we do that is we use acid, HCl, that we recreated in this step right here. So you use HCl, um, alcohol, this alcohol is going to be protonated by the proton here, and then the electrons are going to migrate over, and then you're going to get this product. Okay, so let's see. Did you guys get this in your uh, book? And then, by the way, anything wrong in this molecular right here? Well, there should be a positive charge over here, because oxygen donated electrons from the bond with the hydrogen. And uh, once again, oxygen has three bonds, three bonds makes it positive, it's not happy, yada yada, shut up Frank. Um, so now it's a better leaving group, so we can use the electrons here to attack the carbon, to attack the carbon right here. And then the water molecule will just leave. Okay. When he leaves, you're going to get this, or you should get this molecule. Damn it, who's calling me? Sophia, stop calling me. Mm. Alright. Oh, sorry, I lost track of what's going on. Damn you, Sophina. Mm. You're going to get this molecule. So we're almost at our acetal. Oh, I'm sorry. We're almost at our cyclic acetal. I uh, probably should have added that a little earlier in the video, right? Whoopsie. All right. I know this is really ugly, but uh, yeah. One carbon, two carbon. One carbon, two carbon. Your water molecules floating around. You left. And then what's missing in this molecule? A positive charge right here. And then how are you going to get rid of that positive charge? Well, let's see, how have I been doing with my smileys? Yep, we lost our catalyst, we gained our catalyst back here, I screwed up over here, I should be uh, putting a sad face because we lost our catalyst again, that's bad for us. But in this step here, we get to our final product because the Cl- minus that was generated in this step here comes back, helps us out, takes the hydrogen, aka deprotonating the hydrogen, and then um, you get to your final product from there, okay? And you also get 
HCl, which is your catalyst back, so you're perfect now. And also, oh my god, I'm doing such a terrible job. Smiley face. So one sad face cancels out with one smiley face. One sad face cancels out, cancels out with the other smiley face. So your net change in uh, catalyst is zero, and everything is good. So yeah, take a look at uh, the whole entire mechanism again, and see if you can kind of come up with a story for it. My story is just, um, in order to create a cyclic acetal, you need to destabilize your carbonyl first, and then after you destabilize it, your alcohol nucleophile takes advantage of the destabilized situation and substitutes itself into the carbon that's vulnerable. And then your catalyst helps you out by fixing the charges and all that fun stuff. And then your catalyst destabilizes your alcohol molecule that you want to, your, your OH molecule that you want to kick off by pronating it into this form. And then once it's a better leaving group, the other end of your, the other end of your diol, this guy, can now kick it off and form that ring or create that cyclic acetal. And then um, you finish your reaction by just pulling off the hydrogen on the uh, oxygen to, to make your oxygen neutral, make all your molecules happy. By the way, in, step in this step here, the carbon told the uh, water molecule to get his um, unstable ass out of his molecule. Okay? Yeah. So that's that. Hopefully it wasn't too bad. I know I might have went a little fast or whatnot at certain points, but yeah. If you guys have any comments or suggestions, feel free to post it down below. If you really like the way I explain mechanism videos, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel so you get updated when I make new videos. Uh, yeah, and I'll, I'm also starting to take uh, video requests, so if you know that you have an exam in a couple of weeks, make sure you give me a heads up ahead of time, so time to make the videos. And yeah, I'll shut up now. See ya.